Sweeney is losing the run of himself altogether, Dan, says Mickey Riley. It's not like him at all. Mickey and Dan were having a smoke together in Dick Sweeney's yard on a Saturday morning. Now everybody in the parish knew Dick Sweeney, but he had very few friends. Did I say very few? I mean, no friends. There was no money in having friends. From Dick's school days, he believed in buying cheap and selling dear. From bits of toys, footballs in his youth, Dick recognised that people either need money or something to spend it on. If a man or a woman had an asset but needed money, he was there to buy anything at a ridiculously low price. And of course, when you or I wanted an item, Dick had it to sell at an absolute robbery. That extended to livestock, machinery, collector's items, building material, and even latterly houses and land. Better to be a bit mean than at a loss, says Dick. His middle name became, take it or leave it. Very often people took it, not because they wanted to, but because they had to. Five years before, a young couple from Dublin had bought the old mill, restored it, lavished money on it, and had it fit to live in, but eventually everything caught up with them. The debts, the bank, every bloody thing, and Dick bought the building from them. Oh, the greatest fleecing of all time. Then he decided to live in it. A fitting place for the old rascal. Five stories of a cut stone building. But anyway, did he lose the run of himself? Last week, there was an auction in the priest's house, and Dick went to the limit on a bed, supposedly the bed the bishop slept in when he came to the parish to visit. Six feet wide, brass, mahogany, half a ton weight. Oh, look, a passport to heaven for Dick if he could only sleep in it. The door of the mill was four feet wide. The stairs had eight turns in it before it reached the top story, where Dick wanted the bed to sleep in. Call in favours. A team of men were there. When that mill was working, the sacks of grain were winched up to the very top by a cradle on a rope, up to the pulley wheel, 45 feet up to a platform with double doors to be taken in. The very thing. Dan Brady, Mickey Bourne and another half dozen were reluctantly worked for the morning, refurbishing the whole mechanism, the old pulley wheel taken apart, put back together in gantry, 50 yards of a rope, waiting for the bed to arrive. When it arrived, the men on the ground, the men at the top, the men at every story on the way up, got into work. Absolute madness. And in the middle, Dick giving instructions, abuse, threats. But in spite of them all, the bishop's bed left the body of the lorry and took to the air. One floor up, two floors up. We'll have to rest. A feckin' horse couldn't pull this. Three floors, the bed caught the breeze and started to swing. Quick, you feckin' idiots, pull. Four floors up, nearly there. Nearly five floors up, nearly there. When Dick looked at the lorry body and felt something on his shoulder, looked at Dan Brady, the supposed handyman, and said, what the hell was that? And Dan said, just before the whole shebang fell apart and the bishop's bed hit the ground in a cloud of sawdust and splinters, It's the nut that holds the wheel.